1476. Ezio, living in Italy during the Renaissance, is approximately 17 when he discovers that his family was betrayed by a close friend of his father's in the midst of a political coup d'etat. Ezio's father's final instructions lead him to a hidden room in the family home with a chest containing the clothing and weapons of an assassin. Ezio is ultimately unable to save his two brothers and father from the betrayer and all three are falsely convicted of treason. After evacuating their home and sharing a brief accommodation with the family's housemaid's sister, who teaches Ezio some survival techniques, he brings his panicked sister and muted mother to the family's countryside villa, where they are given shelter by Ezio's uncle Mario, who begins training Ezio to become an assassin. Mario also provides information and leads on the conspirators involved in his family's betrayal, which becomes a trail stretching from Florence to Venice and eventually the Vatican. During his travels, Ezio befriends several citizens of Italy who aid him in his pursuit for revenge, including a young Leonardo da Vinci, who travels and decodes pages of Altair's codex, enabling Ezio to gain new weapons and assassination skills. Ezio begins slowly locating and assassinating the conspirators involved, and is ultimately able to identify Rodrigo Borgia as the Grand Master of the Italian Templars, whose main goal is to take control of all Italy. Ezio tracks Rodrigo to Venice and discovers that he has obtained a piece of Eden known as the Apple, an artefact similar to the one that Altair possessed almost three centuries prior, the one that we saw in the previous game. Rodrigo has been researching the knowledge surrounding the pieces of Eden extensively, and believes himself to be a prophet named in the documentation of the artefacts, which would ultimately lead him and other Templars to a location known as the Vault, which is believed to contain powerful information and more pieces of Eden. Ezio and Rodrigo duel, and when Ezio gains the upper hand, guards appear and begin to move the fight into the favour of Rodrigo. The allies that Ezio has made over the years arrive shortly after, and they defeat Rodrigo, who flees for fear of his life, leaving the apple behind. The allies and friends of Ezio finally reveal their common trait, that they are all members of the assassins, including the great Niccolo Machiavelli. They induct Ezio into the Order, informing him that they believe him to be the actual prophet who will lead the assassins, not the Templars, to the vault. The memories restart in 1499, and the team discovers that the latter gained influence and power in the Catholic Church, ultimately being elected Pope as Alexander VI. Ezio and his allies have searched long and hard and collected all 30 pages of the Codex, discovering through it that the vault lies in Rome, specifically underneath the Vatican. They realise that the papal staff is another piece of Eden, and Rodrigo is hoping to use it to achieve access to the vault. Ezio travels to the Vatican and attempts to assassinate Rodrigo, who uses the staff against Ezio, who retaliates with the apple. During the ensuing battle, Ezio is stabbed and Rodrigo escapes with both pieces of Eden. Ezio then chases after him and finds Rodrigo trying to open the vault in vain. The two fight once more and Rodrigo finally falls. However, Ezio refuses to kill him, insisting that he has killed enough in his life and the continued deaths will not reverse the fate of his family. Ezio proves himself to be the prophet when in his hands, the apple and staff open the vault. Inside the vault, he finds not pieces of Eden, but an empty room and a holographic figure named Minerva. She claims that she brought Ezio to her so that almost 600 years later, Desmond and his allies would hear her words through the animus. Minerva explains that she and her race were part of an advanced society that settled on Earth before a celestial event destroyed most of the life on Earth. Of those remaining, the two species worked to recreate the world, before the advanced race sealed themselves in temples around the world, hoping to prevent the same disaster that had destroyed most of their kind from happening once again. As Ezio left the vault beneath the Vatican after listening to Minerva's message, he discovered that Rodrigo Borgia was gone. Noticing too that the staff had been left behind, he attempted to extract it from where it had been impaled into the floor. However, it descended and was sealed away. Mario Artatore then called down to him from the entrance, and he and Ezio fought their way out of the Vatican. 
Ezio, unable to decide whether or not to cast the apple into the Tiber River, gave it to Mario for safekeeping. The two then rode back to Monteriggioni on horseback. However, Ezio soon learned that the Templar threat had diminished little when César Borgia, son of Rodrigo Borgia, laid siege to Monteriggioni. César's army of soldiers, towers and cannons attacked in full force, destroying much of the city and villa. The attack ended with Monteriggioni in ruins, Ezio wounded, and Mario killed by César himself. Though Ezio attempted to follow his uncle's murderer on horseback, he passed out on the road to Rome from his injuries. Ezio regained consciousness in a small house in Rome, where the woman who had been tending to him told him that a man had brought him there, and had supplied him with new armour and clothing. After leaving the house and receiving medicine from a doctor, Ezio left to meet Machiavelli. Through Machiavelli, he discovered that Rome was in despair, and that the citizens were being oppressed by the Borgia. Basing himself on the Tiber Island in the centre of the city, Ezio began his mission to rid the city of the influence of César and his generals. To do so, Ezio re-established relationships between his Assassin's Guild and the other guilds in the city, namely that of the courtesans, led by Madonna Solari and later Claudio Artatore, the thieves, led by La Volpe, and the mercenaries, led by Bartolomeo Dal Viano. Ezio then began to rebuild the Brotherhood by recruiting apprentices, who were made up of both distressed citizens who wished to liberate their city, and young novice assassins. After the recruits had completed their training, he placed them in teams and sent them on missions across Europe. Ezio then began to break down the Borgia influence in Rome by destroying several Borgia towers and their captains. He also sabotaged César's forces by striking at their arsenal, their military funding, and their support from the French forces. To do so, he destroyed the war machines of Leonardo da Vinci, and assassinated two of César's key generals, his banker, Juan Borgia, and the French general, Octavian de Valois. Afterwards, he was informed that Pietro Rossi, an actor, and Lucretia Borgia's plaything, possessed a key to the Castle Saint Angelo. Knowing that he would need it in order to assassinate César and Rodrigo successfully, Ezio tailed after Micheletto Corella, César's personal assassin, who had been sent to kill Pietro. After Ezio had rescued him, both from being stabbed with the spear during his play and from the elements of poison, Pietro handed the assassin the key to the Castello. Upon completion of these tasks, Ezio inducted Claudia into the assassin order, and was elected by Machiavelli to be the new mentor of the Italian assassins. Soon afterwards, Ezio infiltrated the castle, where he witnessed the murder of Rodrigo by his son, César. César forced the location of the Apple of Eden from Lucretia, and hurried to retrieve it from Basilica di San Pietro. However, Ezio successfully reached the Apple before César, and subsequently used it to demilitarize the remnants of César's army. In one last battle, Ezio and his fellow assassins fought César and his surviving men at the gates of Rome. César was arrested by Fabio Orsini by the order of the new pope, though not before commenting that he would not be in chains for long, and that he would never be killed by any man. Afterwards, Ezio brought up César's remarks with Leonardo since he was worried by them. Leonardo suggested utilising the apple to see if what César had stated was accurate. After some hesitation, Ezio decided to follow his advice and found that César would really be released from prison. Ezio declared that he needed to leave at once, reassuring Leonardo's concerns for the assassin guild he was leaving behind by saying, I built this brotherhood to last, with or without me. In 1507, Ezio finally tracked César down at the Siege of Viana, Spain. Ezio fought through the infantry and finally managed to corner César on the castle wall. There, in a climactic battle, Ezio managed to destroy César's armour and ultimately defeat him. Though César insisted he would not die in the hands of man, Ezio then left him to the hands of fate and threw him from the battlements to his death. Afterwards, Ezio took the Apple of Eden into a vault under the Santa Maria Aracchioli, within the Temple of Juno. In March of 1511, 
Ezio travelled to Masayev after he discovered a letter by his late father regarding the secret library of the assassin mentor Altia ibn Lahad that was rumoured to contain his invaluable knowledge hidden beneath the old assassin fortress. There, he was greeted by a battalion of Templars led by Leandros. He later found the entrance to the library, but learned that it needed special keys in order for it to be unlocked. The hired worker that was present in the antechamber to the library mentioned to Ezio that the Templars found one of the keys beneath the Ottoman Sultan's palace, while speculating that the book held by Leandros would lead them to the others. With this in mind, Ezio set out of the fortress to take the book from Leandros and eventually killed the Templar captain at Atlas Village after a long chase. After obtaining the book, Ezio set out for Constantinople, where the rest of the keys were hidden. By May, Ezio had arrived at Constantinople and was greeted by the leader of the local guild, Yusuf Tazim. Yusuf gave Ezio a tour of the city, introducing him to the guild and showing what was left of the Byzantine Empire within the city. After helping the guild recruit a few new initiates and being taught how to use bombs, Ezio went to the first location of the Keys, now a bookshop owned by Sophia Sartor. After an introduction, Ezio found an entrance to the Yerabatan Cistern, where he found the first key along with the tome of an encrypted map that led to rare books which held the location of other keys. Striking up a mutual agreement, Ezio made a promise with Sophia. If she helped decipher the map, he would let her borrow and print a few copies of the books. In the midst of his search, Ezio helped Yusuf save the Ottoman prince from a planned assassination, which earned him the favour of the prince, Suleiman I. Following this, Ezio later met with Suleiman in order to learn of the perpetrator behind the attack, whom they suspected was the Janissary captain, Tariq Barletti. Tailing Tariq, Ezio soon found out that the man had dealings with Manuel Palelogos, the former heir of the Byzantine throne. With this knowledge, Suleiman requested that Ezio assassinate Tariq. However, in his dying moment, Tariq revealed that his forces were to ambush Manuel after gaining his favour. Before dying, Tariq entrusted Ezio to continue his plan and set sail for Cappadocia. In between his tasks for Suleiman, Ezio continually searched for the books with Sophia's help. With each book, he was able to retrieve one of the keys from one of the many secret locations, and with each one he was able to relive some key moments of Altair's life. Ezio arrived at Cappadocia by March 1512. There, he met with Tariq's informant, Dilara. Dilara was eventually captured after she and Ezio parted ways. With haste, Ezio rescued Dilara and managed to cause an explosion that ensued enough chaos to draw out Manuel Palologos. The assassin then managed to corner Manuel after a long chase and killed him before he could escape by the city's inner harbour. As a result, Ezio managed to obtain the last key from Manuel. Just then, Ezio saw Prince Amet on a ship with the Byzantines. Amet revealed his true role as the Byzantine's Templar's leader. There, he threatened Ezio into handing over the key, and after the assassin's refusal, Amet threatened to hold Sophia Sartor captive. Despite Ezio's warnings, Amet went ahead and set sail back to Constantinople. Hurriedly, Ezio escaped the burning city and made his way back to his boat, and on the way back, he relived the fifth key's memory of Altair's life. Ezio later returned to Constantinople, hurriedly making his way to Sophia's bookshop. There, he found a platoon of assassins dead, as well as Yusuf, Filled with rage at the slaughter, Ezio made his way to the harbour of Theodosius. Amet had one of his men hold Sophia by the edge of the Galata Tower. Pressured into decision, Ezio gave the keys to Amet and went to Sophia's rescue. However, the woman was only a decoy and the real Sophia was about to be hanged somewhere else. Ezio hurriedly made his way to her, managing to save her just in time. As Sophia recovered, Ezio watched as Amet's carriage left the city, before he spurred himself and Sophia into one of their own to give chase. Fortunately, Ezio managed to catch up to Amet by the city's countryside, eventually causing his carriage to fall, along with Amet and himself. The assassin then retrieved the keys while contemplating what to do with Amet. As he did, however, Amet's brother, Salem I, arrived with a platoon of Ottoman guards and janissaries. Salim then murdered his brother by pushing him off a nearby cliff. Meeting with Ezio, Selim went on to threaten that Ezio be killed if he returned to Constantinople, sparing him only due to Suleiman's good word. 
Ezio and Sophia arrived at Masiev. There, Ezio reflected upon his life and decided to retire after learning the contents of the library to spend the rest of his time with Sophia. Arriving at the library's door, Ezio utilised the five keys and managed to solve the puzzle etched into it before he made his way inside and soon found the library. Void of books except for the seated remains of Altair. His corpse held one last key, where his last major memory was imprinted. After reliving Altia's final memory, Ezio went to inspect the Mentor's Apple of Eden by the pedestal, though he decided it best for the Peace of Eden to stay where it was, before finally laying down his arms as a sign of retirement. There, the apple activated as Ezio called out to Desmond. The assassin admitted and accepted his existence as a conduit for a message not meant for him, asking Desmond to make the bloodshed in his life mean something. As an apparition of Desmond appeared, Ezio reached out for him, triggering the Sync Nexus. Thank you for watching that everybody. If you liked this video and you want to know more Assassin's Creed lore and backstory and recaps and everything, then subscribe to Jam Punch because I'm going to be releasing a brand new Assassin's Creed video every single week. My name is George, this is Jam Punch and I will see you next time.